It is cold out here. I know you can't see my breath, but that's because the sun is right behind this tree. I'm telling you what, we, we got quite a bit of, as you can tell, a little bit of winter weather here. Luckily, they were calling for a whole lot of ice, but what we ended up getting was quite a bit of sleet. Uh, not that much snow. So when you're looking at the, the white stuff here, it's about, I don't know, a couple inches of sleet with a little bit of snow mixed into it. But you know, what, you, what I love about this, and I'm not a fan of winter weather. I'm really not a fan of real cold temperatures either, but I am definitely decked out here. But uh, what I love about a snow event or any type of winter weather, weather like this sleet event, it kind of paints a new picture out in the woods. Because as you can tell when you're looking out here, everything is a lot, it pops, doesn't it? Everything pops out at you with that white blanket uh, underneath, uh, you know, on, on the ground. And so you can see movement a lot easier. And uh, so I like to get up and get out and get out here. And like right now, uh, you know, the, what I would be hunting for would be squirrels, squirrels or rabbits. I'm gonna look for some rabbit tracks out here. And that's another thing. What I like to do is I like to go out and check out the activity in the woods because there's a lot of times, you know, during hunting season that you can't necessarily see where there might be a high density of animals kind of staying for, mo for the most part or traveling through unless it's just a really beaten down path. But when it snows, or when you get a lot of sleet like this right here, you can go out and you can and check out, you know, what animals might be on the property that, uh, that you've been hunting and kind of where their travel paths are. Now, what's really neat though, is we're, we're back on another rabbit hunt here <laughs> because that's what I'm gonna go out here and try to harvest a few rabbits for the supper table again. And what I like about this is they're gonna be holed up. So you'll be able to see their tracks and we'll kinda, of, I'll kinda of show you the tracks in the snow or the sleet if we find some. And they're gonna be up in, their, uh, up in this cover. And it's really easy when a snow comes to go out here and jump shoot rabbit. And if, if I happen to see a squirrel, I'm gonna take a squirrel too. Now what I use, uh, you know, I, I'll show this. This is a 20 gauge shotgun. And I prefer a 20 gauge when I'm rabbit hunting for sure. And, and when I'm squirrel hunting for the most part. And the reason why is because you go any bigger, a 12 gauge, you know, a 12 gauge shotgun packs a lot of punch. And so if you're jump shooting rabbit and it doesn't get out there very far and you shoot it with a 12 gauge, you could, you know, you don't wanna mess up the meat. And so uh, you could do a lot of damage to it where a tw 20 gauge is not gonna do as much damage to the meat, especially if you let them get out there a little bit. Now, what I like to do is I like to lead them. So if I'm gonna shoot at a rabbit or a squirrel that's running, I'm gonna lead them just in front of the animal as it's running. And so hopefully I get that good head shot and, uh, and in that way it doesn't mess up the meat. And then what shot I like to use is number six shot. Uh, number six shot is a good all around shot. You don't wanna go with anything that's uh, any, like a number eight shot. That's usually what you're using for bird hunting, dove hunting uh, and such because the, the bigger the shot, like the number six, it's kind of weird. It's kind of the lower the number, the bigger the shot. But like a number eight shot shell, and let me show you here. This is a shot shell. It's not a bullet, it's called a shot shell. And that's a number six high brass, as you can see right there. And so at number six, not gonna have as many pellets as, as a number eight shot shell will. Because the last thing you wanna be doing is eating supper and crack a tooth. <laughs> and so uh, a number eight shot shell will pull a lot more pellets into something. So, you know, you could even go down a little bit than a number six. You might could use a number four or number five, but I kind of prefer the number six and that's what I'll be using today. So let's go out here in the woods and see what we can find and see what might've been running around out here in the snow. Matter of fact, while I've got you right here on camera, I just looked to the right and I see some rabbit tracks. And this wasn't made up. I'm telling you, I just happened to look to the right because we just walked down here and here's some rabbit tracks. So follow me, all right? Follow me right over here. Yeah, you can see some tracks right there. And that's rabbit tracks. See how the, the uh, let me take my glove off here and I'll point to it. You can kind of see how the front of the, of the rabbit's uh, front paw right here, how it's kind of pointed. And you can see how their, their back legs right here will leave a elongated print because of their, their heel there as they're uh, hopping around. So we know the rabbit went that way. 
and uh, you can tell that by the the taper of their prints there on the front so we're going to follow that dude and see if we can find up or find out where he holed up this morning now here this is where we can show you the difference between a rabbit track and a squirrel track if you look right here at these tracks, get on the, come on up here, y'all. Move up here to this one. You can see the fall marks, and there's really no taper at the very top to where the rabbit's hind feet and front feet are kind of, I don't know, I guess you call them kind of pointed. These are more, more definite with the claw marks. And so even a squirrel, as it's hopping, will hop with its front feet and its back feet, and then it stands up and looks around or does whatever it wants to do. But anyway, you can tell the difference here in a, a set of tracks uh, between a, a rabbit and a squirrel because of course he's moving that direction. And we'd take a squirrel if we'd see one, but we're making quite a bit of racket. So I doubt we see one uh, as cold as it is out here. And they probably heard us coming from a long ways. Now you can see these set of tracks and no doubt these deer were here, we actually heard them just a, a minute ago as they took off. And so uh, you can tell where they're, they're kind of getting out of here pretty quick. And uh, they've left some, some uh, prints to where they're, they're really moving, at, moving out of here. And you can see how they've kind of trailed off their tracks. And you can look over here to the right and see all the indentions in the snow. So we're in an area that's got a lot of deer activity. There's a lot of white oak trees, acorn trees around here, red oaks. And uh, so this is a spot that I already knew that, that the deer liked quite a bit. And they feed in this area uh, all through the fall. And uh, just a good area for to set up the deer hunt. Check out this squirrel track as well. He's hopping pretty fast. Again, the, di the difference between a rabbit track and a squirrel track is gonna be, you know, even though you see some elongation with their hind feet, you can see it's not really tapered to a point at the very front. And then also some pretty definite claw uh, marks. And same way with their front feet right here. So that's how you can tell the difference between a squirrel track because it can look similar and uh, a rabbit track, one of, the, one, of the, one of the ways anyway. I'm gonna put two more shells in. I just usually like to have three shells. I mean, I don't really need them. They call me one shot Sean or sure shot Sean. <laughs> or that's what I hope they call me. <laughs> and I've always got my safety on, all right? So you have two, uh, two safety measures here. First and foremost, always have this muzzle pointed in a safe direction anytime you're hunting, and then always have your safety on. My safety is always on. Even when I'm fixing to kick this brush pile, I don't take my safety off until I'm right re ready to shoot, okay? And then I put it right back on after I shoot. So your safety is always on. When I'm carrying my gun, I usually carry it like this right here with my finger outside the trigger guard. Never carry your gun whether you're a jump shooting rabbit or just walking through the woods or whatever, never carry your gun with your finger inside the trigger guard. Always make sure it's outside the trigger guard, not inside. So here we go. Let's see what we can find. Take advantage of this. It's kind of starting to melt away a little bit. It is going to get a little warmer. So let's see what we can get here in this brush pile. One shot, Sean. <laughs> Let's see if there's another one in here. Well, we had a great time out here this afternoon. 
Only harvested two rabbits, but that's okay. These are the only two that we saw, and, and that's what it's all about, getting out here, having fun, learning more about the outdoors and the woods that you hunt in. And this will be great. It'll fill the supper table tonight, and uh, I look forward to supper. So we learned a lot following the tracks today and checking out all the different animals that are that are out here in the woods and learned a lot about my, some of the stuff that might help us out for next season. And tracks can tell you a lot and tell you where animals are going, where they come from, and where they're staying. So... Again, enjoyed it. Now it's time for me to get to work here a little bit. Wow, what a fun day. You know, tracks can really tell us a lot about an animal, can't they? Their prints can help us identify the animal and the path that it's choosing to take. They also show us the direction that the animal is headed, how fast it may have been traveling, and if it travels that particular trail quite often. So. What about your tracks, your footprints? What do they say about you? What trail in life are you walking? You know, we are all leading someone, whether it's our kids, our spouse, friends, or our coworkers, there will always be someone following you. So where are you leading them? Will your tracks lead someone towards a faithful and fruitful relationship with Jesus Christ? or will they lead someone into dark places? You know, Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus instructing the believers how to follow Christ. Ephesians 5 verse 1 and 2 says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. And in verse 8, it says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. But Paul didn't just tell them how to do it, did he? He showed them. And in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, he writes, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Paul was saying, if you want to know what it means to follow Jesus, to live as he wants, just follow me. And I will show you, live as I do, talk as I do, walk as I do, and love as I do. Can we say the same? I think it's time we take a closer look at where our tracks are leading us and those that follow us. Would someone know who Jesus is and how to follow him based on your life? I pray our walk leads someone to salvation in Jesus Christ and teaches or disciples them how to live for him and his glory. Well, you know what? I better start making tracks myself. I'll see you next time in the great outdoors.